Hello everyone! Welcome to the Football Phone-In. We're back again. Thank Welcome you very back. much to Ballamacash Rangers for the facility. We love it here, don't we? We absolutely love it. And there's a wee <laughs> Easter camp going on we can see through the windows here as well. Oh yeah, kids are running Shout about. Shout out to all the kids in the Arsenal kits. <laughs> there's not many of them. No, it's just very little. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Very little old man United at Liverpool from what I can see. Uh, I'll tell fun. you what we're doing today. Manager chat. Yeah, there's a lot of management chat that we had. Two managers sacked at the weekend. On the same day. Yep. And the Premier League Hall of Fame managers got introduced as well. Why? The ledge veggies themselves. So, so a lot of chat that we had, mate, with the, with the managers. I'll tell you what, we'll dive into Mr Potter first. <laughs> Graham Potter. Were you surprised or not? Yeah, that was just happened from recording yesterday. Yep. So I, I was surprised, and I wasn't. I was surprised because I sort of thought to myself, well, who are you going to bring in? Who does Chelsea bring in? What manager actually wants to go in? Well, what the, manager the, feels safe? The benefit of that. Chelsea job. Yeah, I feel I mean? like Chelsea can just go and get whoever they want because they can pay all that money. Yeah. Your boy Bowley's not shy of <laughs> getting no, his wallet out. He's got so, his money, like... I think they can go and pull in whoever they want. The thing that surprised me about it mostly was the fact that they backed him like three, four weeks ago. They said, yep. no, he's the man for the long-term project, blah, blah, blah. They even released a statement, I'm sure. Yep. And they said, you know, we're sticking with him. So. And they bought him out of Brighton. Yeah. And basically you know I mean? it was like... Mid-season. Yeah. It was like, forget everything. Potter is the man and we're going to have to put up with this. Mm -hmm. But a few more bad results and then that's, that's, that's it. He's yeah. Out. He's gone. I sort of thought, I obviously knew the results were not good getting beat at home a lot as well mm. was obviously going to put him under pressure I think some of the fans didn't even want him there in the first place which doesn't help <laughs> but I thought at least he'll get the Liverpool game tomorrow night and I thought he would get the Real Madrid tie yeah. and I sort of thought if it's really bad at that point he might go <laughs> but at the same time there's no point bringing in a manager at this point in the season because no. like, Chelsea's got nothing to achieve right now at this moment in time, they're still in the Champions League. I don't believe whoever they get can get them by Real Madrid anyway. <laughs> they can, sure. Madrid have, I, I don't have know. weak spots now because they, you know, they get beat by Barca. So they're trailing behind in the league. They they're are. vulnerable enough. I know they have all the great players and they turn it on in the Champions League, but they, they, can, do. they can get... I think Chelsea, oh, Chelsea can do them with the right manager. That, they're going to bring Mourinho back. They're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Mourinho would take it because the amount of backing he would get. Mm -hmm. But I still think... It's bizarre, Sack and Potter after the amount of investment he got in January, and he didn't even want the players. Uh, like the you know time I mean? frame doesn't make sense because it's like okay, he's doing a bad job. You can you can see pretty much it's like the results are just woeful, woeful, woeful. woeful. And then you thought, okay, well clearly they're sticking with him, and it was the in between phase of mm -hmm. like, are we sticking with him, or has he done a bad job? And then yeah. he just got rid at a weird time. But something I would say is the the backing he's been given, but it's not really him being given. No. It. You've sat, he spent 300 million or something and none of them are players that he wants No, and he has to manage this squad of 33, 35 or something whatever That's it is mental. and he has to try and get everybody game time and clearly he's trying to work that way because his yeah. team selection is bizarre it changes, changes every, every week, week. Does not, uh, it does. it's too much but no I, and like yeah like the players obviously down tools as well players probably didn't want them mm. got a lot of egos to manage as you said 33 plus in the squad you got players like Mount who want to leave ZH who wanted to leave and he has to play yeah. to keep the value up Pulisic wants to go half of these are two chill players half of them are just bully wanting to buy the best the best names yeah. so what manager wants to come in at this point all the shit players they have are on long contracts mm. like Madrid got an 8 year deal 8 years <laughs> so no matter who, no matter who comes in yeah. they, they will the board will just tell that manager these are the players like you have to work with these. Like, mm -hmm. Madrid has to work. Yeah. Because yeah, no one's going to pay him, pay him to leave now. <laughs> no. He's tied. Uh -huh. So now it sort of looks like these contracts that Chelsea were given out in January look shambolic because at the time a lot of people thought it was maybe smart. They seen the loophole in FFP. Uh, they found out a way to pay, to pay them big transfer fees over a long period of time to get the best players in. Mm and not breach financial fair play but now it's starting to look like an absolute shambles because the long term project is a fail has failed and any new manager will be forced to work with that yeah and, and there was always whether they want a, them or not there was always going to be a downside to that yeah like <laughs> so a uh, player yeah. breaks his leg and then he's not the same and you've got him for another five years <laughs> like what what even how do you deal with that I don't know what they were doing with that but I don't know. I think it reflects badly on the board. I think it makes Todd Bowley look 
it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing but yeah and he definitely doesn't know what he's doing yeah, he definitely <laughs> doesn't anyway I think uh, we all knew that but to be on board with Potter and then sack him right before a Liverpool game mm. he's maybe looking at a new manager bounce heading into the Champions League tie yeah potentially um, I've got a theory about Potter I think go for it um, could it be that he's not a top level manager <laughs> and <laughs> I still think fans like, agree remember that he did a great job with Oster Soons or he must have done because mm-hmm. they went up the divisions and that um, but then uh, where was he Swansea or something when he took over at Brighton they were already in the Premier League so he survived relegation twice yep. they were playing good football and stuff at times and he got them up to ninth last year mm-hmm. and then he obviously lands the Chelsea job great opportunity go and take it yeah. but I'm thinking of in all that time um, is he getting the best out of his players is he playing great football and stuff and you see that the new boy is taking over at Brighton and now they're scoring a lot more goals Chelsea can't mm-hmm. score goals at the minute yep. so is there a real problem with his attack in football uh, and can he even defend because Chelsea aren't drawing these games now they're losing no. them Yeah. so his management the fact he's chopping and changing so much yeah. can he manage the players can he manage their egos can he manage all this and I'm thinking you know with the success of Brighton which is clear cut for all to see Brighton just improved oh, the last so couple good. of years so they're doing so well and Potter if you just look at it from a management point of view and you see this progress you're thinking well Potter's a genius he's a great manager he's doing well he's doing the right things but the more I look at it the more I think it's a recruitment thing so mm-hmm. Brighton's recruitment is absolutely exceptional and yeah. over the last Where few years you see these it. players like Matoma yeah, Caicedo pull them. yeah like Caicedo you pull out <laughs> Matoma's a great example mm-hmm. you just pull in players like McAllister. Sully Marsh McAllister yeah. like players that you didn't know where they were before no. and all of a sudden they're top level Premier League footballers mm-hmm. and I'm thinking how much of it is to do with you've been given all these fantastic players the the recruitment is absolutely spot on every time and they're bound to improve yeah. or is it Potter managing them and doing a great job I'm starting mm-hmm. to think looking at the job he's done at Chelsea which is non-existent <laughs> that um, yeah. that Brighton were destined to succeed with their policies yeah w- whether Potter was there or not yeah. basically but to your point you said Potter Potter with Chelsea at the minute are getting beat every week and they don't look like scoring uh, I agree but then you look at the Villa stats so they played Villa there in a the weekend it'd be 2-0 at home Chelsea had 23 shots I, can. <laughs> I, didn't, had four. I didn't see that game I yeah, can't believe no, that Chelsea had 23 shots something like 14 or something like that on target it's not like as if the chances weren't there so you'd blame do you know players. what I mean they don't have a striker so they don't have a striker they don't have someone who just puts the ball back net like the chances are there like say mm. if they had a hurricane or they had even a Bamiyang that played in the Arsenal days like obviously yeah. a Bamiyang sitting there rotting away at Chelsea at the minute because Potter doesn't want them but to see someone just to sit in the box and put the ball away like mm. it would happen it's not like as if the chances are not there you had 24 shots in the Premier League match mm. you are creating that like you are attacking football but like Mudrick mate had one chance I think it was Kovacic put, like Villa tried to walk out and play offside uh-huh. Kovacic played, played a straight ball Mudrick one on one had all the time in the world took an early shot and just like straight into oh he passed yeah sorry yeah. I did see I did watch that pa- basically passed it and then Martinez's yeah. gloves and I'm like how <laughs> like thank god Chelsea signed you and we got Trossard like <laughs> that like mate he, he's like Pep to be one of the best players in the world Mudrick mm. and he Pep to be like, proper talent yeah, yeah like one of the best and that air just showed to me he, he panicked panicked one on one and like that chance is there like if that's Trossard it's in mm. if that's a if that was a pro you would striker, say that if that was Trossard it would be in yeah. you know what I mean uh, even if Chelsea went and signed like a, a Vlavic or something from mm, Juventus yes. uh, like them chances that you're creating that week in week out get put away just not putting away at the moment. Yeah, maybe it's as simple as that if, if Potter players had his do, way, I think players have to take some of that blame because you can't you can't have that many chances and not score oh yeah and to back up Potter's argument if he had his way and he was making the actual transfers which clearly he wasn't no. um, he probably would have brought in a striker and 100%. then do you win that game against Villa because you have a, a good centre forward who's they brought in Joe Felix for six months to be fair yeah not an out striker but a uh, creative player a bit more but but, he's, but he, does, he, he does seem to play there as well. yeah he scored a few but He's only six months, and that was a joke of a fee anyway. I must have been six him? months. It was so oh, how much was it? It was something like twenty million, I think, in fees. That I ended up they only with him six months. So it worked out like one or two million per game. Oh, it's a loan deal. Yeah, loan deal. For six I didn't months. even know it was a loan deal. Yeah, it's expired, <laughs> but it was a twenty million fee. Oh wow! For the loan, 
Flip. World wages and the fee all yeah. in. And then there's, the wages. there's another player you're not keeping. No. <laughs> but then they get back. Chelsea's I believe mess. they get Lukaku back in summer. So maybe that's part of the that, plan. Yeah. And then and Cuckoo's coming in in summer. Because oh, he's yes. out of contract. And right. they signed him on the pre contract agreement. Yes, I heard so, that. And he, well, I don't even think he plays a striker. I think it is a centre forward role, but not an out and out striker role. For the. Was it Leipzig he's with? What does that mean? <laughs> centre forward but not a striker? Aye, uh, like centre forward, like, you know whenever you just play in behind, like a nine? Oh, he's like a number ten. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I think that's where Nkuku plays. Okay. But they're saying he's he's coming in to do that role, apparently. Yeah. I don't even know where that uh, sits role. with Chelsea, yep. like, but... <laughs> yes, Chelsea, <laughs> like, there's a couple of players already coming back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But so maybe that's, that's why... <laughs> They didn't buy a striker. They're a big mess. But it's a bit of a shambles at the minute. But, um, um, should we chat Brendan? I was about to say, transitioning to Brendan, I think that's a role Potter could walk straight into. He's Leicester. Getting rid of Brendan Rodgers. Uh, but can he make an immediate impact? Because if he could have made an, an immediate impact at Chelsea, he would have done so. Mm-hmm. He would have got a couple of results and saved his job. But that's true. He's not. he didn't do that. No. He's more. He seems more a long-term project builder. But then I think Leicester would have the patience to build mm. versus Chelsea mate who in my opinion fans Chelsea fans are spoiled because <laughs> Abramovich just, ah, they're used to six month managers yeah, yeah. The, Abramovich just went if you're not winning we're sacking you yep. and we're just going to bring in a, a born winner <laughs> yeah. every time and we're going to get silverware every year although I, I'd argue with that do you know what I mean um, what did you say there that uh, yeah Leicester aren't going to be patient they're in an emergency state <laughs> like uh, they're, they're going down they're 19 at the minute not patient I would yeah, yeah. you're probably so right they need somebody to save the day and then they can worry about yeah building later yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but could Potter, could Potter not go and save, save the day and build for next year or is um, he the kind of manager that needs a pre-season I wouldn't be confident I think the boy needs a break <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true I think, he I think be, he's stressed he man. you can see his bags under his eyes and all or uh, like getting big like you can tell he's, he's not yeah. he's not great he's had enough <laughs> But that Leicester job, if Leicester went down, that uh, would be, it would be bad. Catastrophic. I actually like Leicester in the league. Mm. I think Leicester's a great club, for obviously winning it. Not that enough good players. Yeah, they um, get a couple of players. Should be off them 100%. Right they should be definitely doing a lot better. And I just think it'd be bad for the league. I'd rather see a Bournemouth go down or a Southampton go down over Leicester. Like I don't want to see Leicester go down. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Southampton Bournemouth fans, but no, nah, Leicester sacking Rogers. It was coming. It um, was they, coming. They have not been great all um, year. The people are starting to argue about whether or not you rate Brendan Rogers as a manager, and I, I think he's been a brilliant manager over the years like the treble treble with Celtic yep it's never been done before won the FA um, Cup at Leicester yeah he won the FA Cup at Leicester mm-hmm. he won the FA Cup that was the first ever he, FA Cup he nearly well. won the league with Liverpool which seemed an average side before that season started people you know, would say he got all that league though if you can spin it whatever way you want there was a couple mm-hmm. of dodgy decisions in that time but to get them in that position was exceptional management yeah, um, yeah he's, he's done a good job everywhere he's went mm-hmm. even Swansea I think Swansea started playing really well under Rodgers mm-hmm. playing good football that's right yeah um, and yeah it's it's kind of weird it's ended this way I think yeah. Leicester fans were having a were, were in dreamland whenever he won the FA Cup with them yeah. they were always up around the 4th and 5th obviously they finished 5th a couple Did of they times they dropped to go against your point there were two times they were sitting in fourth yeah, yeah, yeah. on the last day of the season that a bottle job and both times last day of the season dropped the fifth is he they just a bottle job they are he is is he just a bottle I know he's from here <laughs> uh, he is from here he's a good lad uh, yeah, yeah he is so uh, here it could be a shout if Michael O'Neill doesn't do the job in Northern Ireland he could potentially do a Northern Ireland job bring in Brendan could that, yeah because we've, we've got a young parts. developing team do you reckon we could pay him enough but that's it <laughs> he's just a Premier League money, so <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know if he's if he would get it over here, but I'm sure to manage international he might it might be a better All job right. for him. Do you think he walks into another job or not? Another Premier League job? Not at the minute. I think he w- he is the one that will take a break. I think Potter might go straight into a job hmm. over R- R- Rogers. I think Potter needs to, to be honest. I think the longer Potter sits out to sa- try and save his reputation. Yeah, yeah. The more Potter sits, mate, the more I think. Hmm. Teams are just not going to rate him. <laughs> um, yeah, but Chelsea. But Chelsea's Spurs so are weird. still looking a manager too. Yeah, Brendan goes to Spurs. I don't see it. Like <laughs> I don't see it, but I know they're looking. No, who knows who Spurs are going to? That's get. a vacant role, and I don't know. I, Three I think vacant roles. That's wild. Chelsea and Tottenham will fight for the Bayern ex-Bayern yes. manager Nagelsmann, and 
I don't know. I don't know if Potter would go straight into a Leicester job because I do think he would need a bit of time to build. I feel like we've just thrown them together because of the standards. Yeah, You're like Potter's. But not that, that's exactly it. that's our point. But uh-huh. that's Potter's standard. Like yeah. That's Potter's like if that because was he holding Brighton back <laughs> is my question exactly yeah but uh, that's Maybe why you just go back to the Swedish it just league. made sense in our head to put Potter and Leicester together because that's that's his level yes he should never have got sense. a Chelsea job uh, and a lot of Chelsea fans out there did not want him in the first place he, they sort of knew he was just a man in, in the way uh-huh. to get them like he was never going to get them anywhere near the league and a lot of Newcastle fans sort of thought that way. They how he's just a man that's just going to take take uh, the place for a while. Progress. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll move on. And Eddie Howe, mate, he's sitting in third at the minute. Yeah. Now he's the king. Yeah. <laughs> he just beat Man United Newcastle. in the weekend. They're sitting in third, doing an amazing job in their first season with money. And they haven't even spent a lot. No. They've signed a few decent players. Like Isaac, the right players. Yeah. Uh, Bruno. Butman. Butman. Burn. Trippier. You know nothing. Nothing outstanding. They're not going out there and buying an Mbappe like a superstar. But they're building a team. Really well. yeah. And I think that's a lot of teams, maybe I'm saying this out of being an Arsenal fan bias as well, but a lot of teams are looking at the Arsenal model and Arteta and looking at yeah, looking at them. what they're doing and going, trust the process. You look at that Arsenal team, there's not a superstar yeah. in the team. There was one called Aubameyang and Arteta got rid of him. Mm. He's built a team of people who actually like love each other, get on with each other and understand the rules. Sign a lot of young players too. A lot of young players and I think maybe Potter and Chelsea were going through that phase where Arteta had at the start of Arsenal. If you remember we went on a horrific run of like ten games. Mm. Bare, I think one win and one draw and the rest were defeats. Uh. And we were losing to all the big clubs away and ho- I'm at home. I think Potter had that phase with Chelsea there, but Chelsea do not have the patience that the Arsenal fans have. It's a new have. owner, though, so it should be a new Chelsea. So it's the should, most bizarre that's thing, the thing because the message was always we have to stick with them because it's a long term. We're not thinking short term. And then, maybe it is just the fact the results got so bad yes. that it does come to a point where you have to get rid of the manager. Yeah. But the manager, the manager's always the fall guy, isn't it? We should that's not it. let him go until the summer and then the manager can actually negotiate who he wants rid of. Yeah. And then you have the squad that you want and then you can build because that, that seemed to be the whole point. I don't know who they're going to bring in now and whether they're going to just scrap their whole project plan bring in someone that's short term that's the oh, old will. Chelsea model like an Antonio Conte who's going to get success no. quick yeah. organise them drill them get them fit or are they going to try another long term and then if it doesn't work out are they going to sack him as well it's such a bizarre know. mess it's, it's back to the player contracts man which is where this is the sticking point mm. they have to work them players now like, yeah, the manager to, uh, has to make it work. Uh-huh. Like Bowley will just say to to the Bayern manager, to Luis Enrique, whoever it is comes in, you need to work with a squad because this is what we've yes. got. Like, and the owner, that's it. The, the owner wouldn't be happy if, say, this man, this new manager didn't like no. um, a Mudrick or something and they left him rotten in the, yeah. squad, in the reserves or on the bench. He's, then the owner might say something. <laughs> the owner will be like, mate, we've spent a shitload of money <laughs> on that player. Sort of He's like. on the books for eight years. Uh-huh. We're playing him 350 grand a week. Which, if you do the maths on that, is a ridiculous amount of money per year. Is that what he's actually on? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's a big wage, man. Uh, Enzo Fernandez as well, like something like 300 grand plus. Well, he's and he's very on. Good very good player, but I, I, don't, I don't know. He Major, has not made an young, impact. So you don't know, but Enzo, I think, is he's dead on. I, I haven't watched a lot of Enzo. I know he got a World Cup medal and all, but. Mm. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say that's because Enzo. <laughs> I would say that's a messy thing. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I think a lot of them players are getting credit. I think the only other Argentine, Argentinian player I would give credit to was probably Di Maria and McAllister. Di Maria is sure was only playing in the final. Yeah, but I like him. I thought <laughs> he played well. And But yeah, pff, Chelsea are a bit of a shambles. Leicester are a shambles. Yeah. And Tottenham are. Oh, Leicester in serious trouble. Because well. I'm looking at all those teams down there are start. A few of those teams are starting to get results. Obviously, like Bournemouth for winning. Palace, mm-hmm. that last minute winner. Palace yep. have sent Leicester down there, and Palace seem to be they were they were top of the pile, even though there's only four points in it. But yep. they seem to be they'll drift off now because they've got easier fixtures and better players mm-hmm. on the wings anyway. You know, yeah, um, they're not that bad. I thought a team. Palace were always safe. By the way, I thought yeah. Zach and Vera was a bad decision. I thought that was horrendous as well. And I, I thought Roy Hodgson's going to co- come in, do a job, and look amazing, <laughs> which would have happened under so Vera anyway. Every team below. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Vera would have got that result on Saturday there. Anyway, yeah, probably. I, I believe anyway. Probably. Um, but yeah, you're looking at all those three teams, and Bournemouth are winning. Forest are playing well. They're getting some draws. Southampton are Very capable of winning as well. Too. Southampton, 
I don't see them as safe. I think they're going to keep losing as I well. I think they'll, they'll go down, but they are starting to pick up the odd decent result. They needed a bit of luck against West Ham there. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, I, I don't believe that. I think they're down. Yeah. I think Southampton are the, the most likely to get relegated. And the second most likely is Leicester. And it depends on who they bring in. <laughs> but it's just scary to say that, man. Yeah. Because Bournemouth you was down thought, there. You would have thought Bournemouth and Forest, yeah. considering the squads aren't used to the Premier League. And you thought maybe they'll just drop off. But they are looking... They're getting results. They are. And the league... They look well organised. They look up for it. They've got a few good players going forward. So Forrest have your man, what's he called, Johnson. Yep. And the Bournemouth have Billing. And those boys are scoring goals for them. Well, at the minute of the league, so Southampton are down there 23 points with yeah. an extra game played. And then you've got Leicester on 25 points. Everton, 26. Leeds, 26. Bournemouth, 27. Forrest, 27. West Ham, 27. Wolves, 28. Mm. I like started three points, man, between 19th yeah. and 13th. And that puts and Palace away up a wee bit. That puts Palace up a little bit. I see if they're at 30 uh, points. So they're a wee bit there. You've got a wee bit of leverage there. Yeah. But any one of them, you've got Leicester, Everton, Leeds, Bournemouth, Forrest, West Ham and Wolves. Two of them have to go. Yeah. So it looks like... If That's you, crazy. If you get to about 35, 36 points you'd probably be safe. Mm -hmm. The ones I'd have concerns about, and you'd have to look at the fixtures, Leeds and Everton. Leeds and Everton could both go down. And I believed in the Dice project. I basically believed that that he would sort them out and get results. And they're doing well, but you see as soon as they do concede one goal. They've got a few big games, to be fair. They still have have to go away. They will try for a big game against Pals, Newcastle, Man United. So that's Everton. Are gone. <laughs> that's a few of the Everton one. Um, Leicester's got a bit more of a favourable run. You yes. got Bournemouth there, so they have to play teams in and around them. Uh-huh. So if they can pick up points against teams yeah, in and around them, James Madison could just play Wolves, thing. Leeds, Bournemouth, and that's three games out of the next five. That's three teams around them. Yeah. In between that, they get Villa and City, who they probably will lose to. Uh-huh. But if you beat Bournemouth, get a result at Wolves, and get a result away to Leeds, yeah, they're three massive games for Leicester. Like, but there's still nine games to go. Yeah, it, it looks to me like the Rodgers thing was a little bit reactionary where they were basing it on, see, if you don't get the result against Palace, you're gone mm-hmm. because we're in real trouble then. Yeah. Whereas if he was able to beat Palace, they'd chill out a bit and be like, okay, just guide us to safety. Yeah, get us to safety and then maybe yeah. summertime comes and they re- reevaluate where he's at yeah, yeah. and where, where he needs to be. Because Leicester, for me, is a as a top half club. Mm. Like, I believe they've been squad enough to compete with the likes of Villa, even Brighton and Brentford have took over that role now uh, where Leicester sort of used to sit in the league yes. and they're playing far better football they've got far better players uh-huh. and Leicester should not be 19th in the league no. definitely not so things That's... we've worked out Rodgers was doing a terrible job um, Potter's a fraud <laughs> completely <laughs> and yeah. tells fans what they're who's going down let's make that our third point of what we've worked out today I think Southampton are going down Southampton's a definite although I haven't that. looked at their fixtures uh, I've got I'll have ne- I would like to look five. at Leeds fixtures as well because they have some good players but so if has got a tricky <laughs> in the next five games City at home Palace at home away to Arsenal home to Bournemouth and away to Newcastle ok they'll lose them all but they have a, cha- <laughs> they have a chance against Bournemouth which but is Bournemouth, a team in and around them Bournemouth are playing well I feel so and then you got Leeds next five fixtures which are Home the Forest, which is a team they need to beat because that's in and around them. Yes. Home the Palace, which is another one around them. Home to Liverpool, which uh, the way Liverpool's playing at the minute uh, uh, could go either way. Away to Fulham and home to Leicester. So they're playing a lot of teams in and around okay, them in about yes. five games. See, I almost trust Leeds now because I think um, last year maybe they, they actually started well against well. us on the weekend too. Yeah. Do you know um, whenever they needed the result, they pulled out the wins. Mm-hmm. So that's happened in the last year or two. They have lost a couple of players. West Ham is uh, one I want to look at here as well because oh, yeah. David Moyes' job was um, in jeopardy there for a while. People were sort of talking about it. quiet down a little bit because yeah. they picked up three points. Big win there against Southampton. But you look at their next couple of games. Home to Newcastle. Away to Fulham. Home to Arsenal. Away to Bournemouth. Home to Liverpool. And mm. don't forget, they're two points above Leicester. Mmm. <laughs> if West imagine Les, West Ham, Leicester and Southampton get relegated. Big teams like. You could even say Everton and what, uh, one of them as well. But th- that's a couple of big clubs, man. Yep. Send three, three of them down. down. Send three of them down now. Who are they? <laughs> well I'm definitely going Southampton for, for last place. Okay, yes. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go well. with Bournemouth. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to believe 
Take that Leicester and Everton can get out of there. So I'm going to go Southampton, Bournemouth, and Leeds. I'm going to believe Leicester Ooh. and Everton. I'm going to say Leicester and Everton get out of it, have enough to get out of there. I'm going to say Leeds and Bournemouth just don't do it. Leeds and Bournemouth. But though Leeds have played well recently, so I don't like saying that. What about I Wolves? Actually like Leeds. Wolves are boring. We'll just send them down. Wolves. I've had enough of Wolves. Uh, but no, I, I think they have enough. I think they have enough. Enough good players. Again, you look at all these teams, they all have good players. I'm gonna That's a tricky send, one. <laughs> I'm going to send. You see, I think Southampton go down. I also think, <laughs> looking at it, Everton go down. But there's a part of me that just for some reason doesn't believe that Everton will be relegated yeah I just can't it's hard it's, it's weird that they're in that position and still I can't see it <clears throat> yeah <laughs> what is that because they've got well, you think the money they've put into that squad just historically no just like I can't see Everton yeah like just being the a stature captain. of the club yeah yeah it's just like, such a massive it's, it's like, like whenever Newcastle not. went down it's like oh no yeah. you know you, Newcastle it, don't belong yeah it's just like surely so. not yeah <laughs> but but there is fans out there and I've listened to talk sport and I've heard I heard a Palace fan say it which I actually thought was a ridiculous um, opinion was sometimes it's best for your club to get relegated to build to come up again which I think is an absolute bizarre the amount of money you lose assumption you do get the parachute fund from the Premier League something like 40 million for getting relegated so you do get a parachute payment <laughs> but then you lose your players as well and you have to play like championships a hard yeah. league man if you had a bunch of dodgy you know I mean? ego filled players I can see why it would benefit you to offload them for money and rebuild with mm-hmm. a full team but there's no way relegation is a net good <laughs> no I, I don't see it I know Norwich keeps going up and down and that's because of the parachute payments and they, you do get a good bit of money to bounce back like the point on the parachute payments is to point straight back mm. which is unfair on the rest of the clubs in the the championship but I don't believe you, well, ha- you, you have to get relegated to come back up to be better I think that's ridiculous like no, it's basically it's Palace silly. they've been in the Premier League 10 years straight uh, do you know what I mean like that's that is not the way to go no that's silly uh, okay I'm gonna set I'm gonna be bold I'm gonna send down Southampton Everton and Leicester you're going Leicester down yeah, I'm Leicester Everton down. Ooh. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> no, nah, I, I, I saved the big clubs there. I, I went with Bournemouth and uh, Leeds. Well, I say big clubs. Leeds still go to I sent Leeds down, which big is, is a big call, but you put two in them down. I don't know. Yep. See ya. Maybe better stick my Rodgers at that point then. Their decision will yeah. come back to bite them. Have them in the championship. Yeah.